It's Android 10 day. Sure, dark mode and gestures, but here's the feature you should be really excited about. Another off the cuff video. I'm doing this on the fly. I don't even have a script for it, but we finally got the developer preview Android 10 update for the OnePlus 7 Pro. You can see it's connected because we're gonna be doing a bit of screen sharing. We've seen it on Huawei and Honor phones. Dex on Samsung phones is pretty good, but having a native Google backed desktop user interface on every phone could potentially disrupt the tablet market, the laptop market, and maybe even take a shot at the desktop market. And this is the first OnePlus that does support HDMI out over that USB-C plug. So I've got a little adapter, it's connected to my Elgato, and I can capture this footage and show it to you. And while there are definitely some teething pains, this is still one of the beta, the developer preview betas. This is way better than I thought the first generation of the solution was going to be. But I'm gonna click over here now, and this is what the desktop looks like for desktop mode. It's super basic. <laughs> it's really simple. I've got this connected to a Bluetooth mouse and a Bluetooth keyboard. Unfortunately, currently, it doesn't seem like the dev preview will do the same trick that Huawei and Samsung DeX will do. The OnePlus 7 phone screen is just on the normal home screen and there isn't anything in your notification tray to point you towards how you could control desktop mode over your phone. Going back into the screen share, we've got two icons and that's it. Moving down to the little gear icon for settings, we can add an app shortcut to our, our home screen and we can set the wallpaper. And as far as I've been able to play tapping all around the interface, that's all we have access to. All right, nothing else. I'm gonna come back over here and this is the app drawer. I'm gonna click on that. And now we get all of the apps that are installed on the phone that, and we should be able to use in desktop mode, but not all of them work really well. I'm doing this live with you. I'm so excited. I'm, I'm recording this pretty much as my first uh, impressions and experiences, but we can get into our, our real phone settings, but these are the actual settings on the phone. If we go to like buttons and gestures, this is just all the stuff that's a part of the phone. Yeah, let's go to just old school Android. Let's see, back home in recents, and it does show up here. That's actually pretty helpful. Um, let's get that out of the way. Oh, and I'm doing this like I'm looking at it on my normal phone. I can full screen it, but you can see when an app doesn't really know what to do with full screen, it just stays doing portrait mode anyway. So that's not super helpful. One of the things you'd probably wanna do on your phone in desktop mode is surf the internet. So let's head over to somegadgetguy.com, pretty much one of the best websites. And I, right there, I can expand that window just like I normally would be able to, and I can full screen it. So that works pretty well. Oh, and it's already set to request desktop site. Okay, so that's helpful. So now let me scroll down and yeah, it's it's a little chunky. I wish these borders would go away. <laughs> Having the navigation dock at the bottom, not as helpful as you'd think it would be, but this is a pretty normal Firefox browsing experience. Like uh, I can click on, my V50 dual screen review here. And let's see, it's gonna pull up and let's see if I can play the video in the browser. Yeah, and it's playing in the browser, just like you would expect it to. That's working really well. Okay, so let's get rid of this. I can't figure out a way to get it to like minimize to a tray. I've only been playing with it for a couple minutes, but it just seems to shrink or to expand and then we can close but you can have a couple different apps up at the same time. So I can keep photos and Excel up at the same time. Very good to know, but I wanna get rid of that. And now let's see, I think I've got my smartphone benchmarks. So you wanna do a little work in Excel, maybe you don't need to travel with a laptop anymore if your spreadsheets, spreadsheets work well on your normal you know, Android device. Yeah, it's uh. It's a little compact of a view. I, I, I hope we'll be able to change up resolution and maybe make font a little bit smaller for the desktop mode without it impacting without it impacting the phone controls. We I think we would want to leave those separate. Oh, I can't control the lateral very easily. 
oh, what am I doing? I've got a keyboard connected too here. So if we really wanted to see, you know, what our scores were on the OnePlus 7 Pro, we can go through and we can check out some of my benchmarks playing with that phone. So okay, yeah, this this is probably more how I would I would type stuff into this uh, this spreadsheet. This one's critical for me because I've been trying to produce more content directly from my phone. I I have a project that I started on the phone in PowerDirector. It's optimizing. Okay, so this is the project I started working on on the phone. And let me open it. I don't have a lot of content on. And here we have photo and video files just sort of randomly snapped in my office. And it shifts up the, the layout just a bit more like when you run PowerDirector on Chrome OS. So a lot of this seems like Google's just trying to adopt part of their part of their desktop mode from Chrome OS. And I'm fine with that. So yeah, this seems to be playing pretty well, at least like I would expect it to. And I'll have to do some tests. Like if I render over this desktop mode, will it be just as fast as if I render um, directly from the phone without anything else connected. But when you full screen it, you get your play button back. <laughs> I, I don't know why there would be a difference um, between the full screen and the regular screen. Okay, so there are definitely some, <laughs> some issues to work out. But yeah, I've been able to fire up a couple other apps. You know, like if we want to pull up a YouTube, uh, here, like you can see I already searched for this. We can play that. We're going to sit through an ad going to skip this ad. It's playing there. Now if I full screen it, oh, it just stays the same, but let's try doing this too. And there it's playing all the, the whole video right there. Excellent. Very, very good. That makes me happy. And we can kill that right now too. So folks, I, a very, very early first look at desktop mode, Android 10, formerly known as Android Q, and running on the OnePlus 7 Pro. The exciting next step in our phones being able to disrupt other products. I will be very happy when I can buy a, a potentially expensive phone, like a $700 to $1,000 phone and plug it into some other kind of hardware. Because what we see from Google's implementation of the desktop mode, we might be able to utilize this on a tablet dock and still have touchscreen controls. We might be able to plug this into a laptop dock and power roughly the same services. Like if you're using Google Docs, it's not gonna change too much from your laptop as compared to running it off of your phone on a bigger display. We're starting to get there. So Dev Preview 5, OnePlus 7 Pro, Android 10, and desktop mode is finally mostly functional. Hopefully Android 10 will be coming to your phone soon-ish, especially if you're rocking a Pixel. And from there, we're gonna have plenty more to say about the future of Android, the future of data and services. So I hope you'll stay tuned because it's gonna be a fun discussion. I'm more excited about this Android operating system release than I have been for a couple years because I want our ridiculously powerful phones to be capable of doing more things and replacing other gadgets. As always, folks, thanks so much for watching, for sharing these videos, subscribing to this channel. If you'd like to help support some more of these types of conversations, digging a little deeper into our gadgets and our, our data and our services, there are links below. You could consider joining my Patreon. There's an amazing community of patrons that are helping to support these types of tech topics, especially when I'm just rambling right off the cuff like this. They're a fun community. I, I hope you'll check them out. Now, you know where you can find me around the rest of the internet at some gadget guy on the Twitters and the Twitch and the Facebooks and the Instagrams. And I will catch you all on the next video.